This problem has three parts, A, B, and C. In part A, we use mesh currents in KVL to analyze a circuit and put together three equations with three unknowns. That's coming up right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark. There are no lectures here, I just solve problems. Homework problems that help you understand how to do them. Electrical engineering, extra service. Determine the total power in the circuit using the mesh current method. And um, in this term, what we're talking about in mesh currents, we're actually going to take the currents from each of these um, the loops in here. And we're going to call this I1. You can see this is I1. And we're going to take, and it's going to go the other way. Alright, so I'm going clockwise on these guys right here. I'm going to call that one I1. Um, I2. Okay, and that I2 will be going this way, and then I3 will be taking this way. Now, in mesh currents, we're going to end up with a super mesh on this particular problem. And we'll see that come about here in a moment. I'm going to take to a little bit different color over here. Um, in order to analyze this, we're going to look at what's going on. It's what we have is six essential branches and four essential nodes. And here are the branches. When we talk about essential branches, are branches that are connected uh, to more than one other device. So these branches are connected to each one of these. Here's one branch. It's connected at least to um, several other devices. Um, here's branch. That's what we call the branch. Essential branch number one right here. Essential branch number two is uh, this one down here. As you can see, this branch has many connections. Uh, essential branch number three. Uh, essential branch number four. Essential branch number five and branch number six. We get six essential branches. And with that, um, of course, how many essential nodes we have here is essential node one, essential node two, essential node three, and of course the last one is our essential node four, which we decided to make a reference. Okay, so in order to determine how many equations we need, it says in B, number of uh, essential branches minus the number of essential nodes minus one, which is going to be six essential branches minus four essential nodes minus one, which is going to be three equations. So we're going to need three equations to solve this problem. Um, and the way we're going to do this is just going to go through, of course, what we have is uh, several resistors in here and um, two constant voltage. One's a constant voltage, one's a constant current. It's a dependent current. This is a dependent current source right here. And that dependent, I know it looks like an independent, but it's actually a dependent current source. So it's true shape might look a little bit like that. And it's a dependent current source. All right. So the dependence on this is going to be V delta over 30, where V delta is the voltage between across, basically across this resistor, taking this. Um, this is the positive, and this is the negative. So let's go ahead and write the current equations. The first one we're going to write is the. Um, we need three equations, so we're going to take this by loops. And the first one is going to be the I1 loop. So the, the first, first loop, we're going to start at um, um, this one right here. So this is I1. So then we're just going to look at that. And what this is going to be is going to be R1. And this is just I1, right? If we're taking this in the positive direction, going from here to here, we're going I1 to R1 times. Okay, plus the next item in this loop is R3. <coughs> and that's his times I1 minus I3. You see these two oppose. So I1 is going to the left and 
I3 is going to the right, so it's I1 plus I1 minus I3. And then, of course, the third object in this one is R2, and that's going to be times I1 minus I2. All that adds up to zero. The next one is the I2 loop, and that's this one here. So we're going to start at the uh, V1, which is going to be this one right here. So V1, and that's just the voltage. Remember, we're, we're using KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, to go in, around in this loop. All the loops, these should bat, everything, uh, adding up all the voltages through this circuit should add up to, to zero. Um, minus R2, okay, since we're going from positive to negative, the direction of the current flow. And plus to minus is a downward, so it's minus R2 times. And it is the I2, and the uh, I1 is going the opposite direction, so that's I1. Minus, we have R4 here, times, and that's also an I2, minus I3. That all adds up to zero. Okay. Now, for the last little bit here, we can't write an equation for this third loop because we have a, a current source over here. And we don't know what the value is. It's some value, V. We'll call it V naught for the heck of it. Um, but um, what we can do is what we call a super mesh, which is basically to lead this out and then work with some sort of constraint. And the constraint we have, of course, is that these currents right here, these three currents, all add up to zero. So, that's the question is, how do we describe those three currents? So we have um, the first current, this one right here, is just equal to V delta over 30. Whatever this is, that's what that is. Um, of course, it says I equals the 2 amps, and that's what it actually comes out to when we do the analysis. Um, this is a, this whole circuit is a leftover from, a, from a, something similar to a P-spice. We'll get into that in a little bit. This, uh, okay, so what we have here is that we're going to do this... Um, Basically, the way to determine what these currents are, we're going to look at this current right here. And we're going to say V delta, let's write what V delta is. So we have some constraints here. I'm going to try to scroll it, scroll it up just a little bit. We have basically our constraints, which are that... And we're going to call it, um, we know that V delta is equal to, well, this voltage right here. So that's equal to R2 times, and going from positive to negative is going to be I2 minus I1. All right, so we don't know what that is yet. And then... Uh, but we do know that this is going to come out to. Let, so we're looking back at this back at this little bit of uh, back at this little bit right over here, and we want to know how to determine what the currents are. What is this? This I should be the same as I R one, and then this this current here coming out here should also be I R three. Whatever these currents are. So, and then that's I, R, and then finally, of course, this is going to call, we're going to call this um, I, um, just I, V naught, I, V delta, or whatever we're going to call that. Um, we're going to call it I delta. Okay, so the three of these currents, that's the constraint, I, R, 1 plus I R2 plus I delta equal to 
zero. Now, um, I'm going to blank this out because we don't want this uh, confusing anything. So, uh, let's figure out what IR1 and IR2 are. IR1 is going to be, and we're going to take it as going in. We think both these currents are going in here because this current's going this direction. We have currents going from there to there. So we're going to take this as, as going to be IR1 is equal to basically I1 and then uh, minus I1. Because it's coming out, right? And then I R three. It is three, by the way. Over here is going to be. Now thinking of this is coming out is basically going to be this um, coming out of is going to be I one minus I three. Right. So now we have some. Now we have an equation. We just take these, we have this one, we have this one, and then of course we have I delta. So let's do a little subbing in here. I'm going to put, um, let's see, minus I1, that's IR1, plus I1 minus I3, plus I delta equal to zero. Okay, so that, that that's our that's our that's our constraint equation. Let's um, of course we know that I delta is equal to let's write what I delta is equal to B delta divided by thirty. Okay, so that's that's the other part of this little bit of equation. So Right away, we see these two I1s just drop right out. And what we end up with, and then I delta, and so we get minus I3 plus I delta, which is V delta over 30, equal to 0. And then V delta, we know, is R2 times I2 minus I1. So let's substitute that in minus I3 plus R2 times I2 minus I1 divided by 30 equal to 0. Then we get minus 30I3 plus R2I2 minus R2 I1 equal to 0. We have um, R, R2 is equal to 15 ohms. So let's drop this in here. Um, R2 let's drop this in minus 30 times I3 plus 15 times I2 minus 15 times I1 equals to 0. Divide 15's. We're going to divide everything by negative 15. So we're going to get I3, 2I3 minus I2 plus I1 equal to 0. So these are going to be our, um, this is going to be our first equation, or our third equation. I1 minus I2 plus 2I3 equal to 0. Alright, so this is going to be one of the first equations in solving this problem. The next two equations we have are going to be We've just written these. We want to solve these in a matrix. So we've got these equations right here. Let's take those, those, uh, these two equations here, and uh, put them down. All right. 
so this is our first, um, our first equation, the third equation of the matrix. If we want to solve for the I1 loop, we had, let's write that equation down one more time. We had 5 times I1 plus 20 times I1 minus I3 plus 15, and we're putting resistor values in, I1 minus I2, and that all equal to 0. So let's knock this one down a little bit. We've got 5I1 plus 20I1 minus 20I3 plus 15I1 minus 15I2 equal to 0. Knocking that down a little bit, collecting terms, we have I1 times 5 plus 20 plus 15 plus I2 times minus 15 plus I3 times minus 20. That is equal to 0. And then from that, we get 40 I1 minus 15 I2 minus 20 I3 equal to 0. And that's the second equation in our solution matrix. We have three unknowns and three equations. Um, the I2 loop. It's going to look like this. We got 120 volts minus 15 times I2 minus I1 minus 10 times I2 minus I3. It all equal to zero. Collect up, separate all these um, out. We're going to minus 15 I2 plus 15 I1 minus minus 10 I2 plus 10 10 I3 equals minus 120. So I've taken the 120 over to the other side. That's a wrong number. That one we get plus 15I1 minus 25I2. And I'm adding up terms right now. Plus 10I3 equals to minus 120. And when we put all these terms in the right place, we're going to just multiply everything by a negative. So I have minus 15I1 plus 25I2 minus 10I3 equals to 120. And that actually uh, makes things a little bit simpler. Not a lot, but a little bit simpler. As I traded two negatives for two other neg negatives. Okay, so now we have three equations. Here's um, here are the, the three main equations. We need this one. We need this one, and we need this one. All right, and these are going to establish a matrix. So uh, at this point, this is probably just enough for one session at the end. After this, what we're going to do is just, um, we're going to do what's called Kramer's method of resolving this problem. And then we're going to show a little bit of math class. Okay, so this is part one of the series. And at this point, I'm going to say part one ends here. Okay, so the next part is going to be next time around. Thanks for watching my program. If you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for an organized listing of my YouTube videos, go to my website, www.wheremyplacebos.com, and click on videos. Have a great day.